Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Venkatesh Srinivasan, and I'm going to talk about uh, speeding up machine code synthesis. So this is the de facto motivation slide of uh, every single talk at a PL conference. Software is pervasive. I'm pretty sure you have seen plenty of these. So let me modify this slide uh, slightly to say that binaries are pervasive. Binaries are everywhere. They run in all sorts of devices. And sometimes these binaries lack source code and our documentation. These binaries could be old legacy binaries, or they could be untrusted binaries downloaded from somewhere. And then we, as computer scientists, are often asked to develop tools that can analyze and rewrite these binaries. Let's focus on binary rewriting. So why would one want to rewrite a binary that lacks source code and or documentation? Well, one might want to either uh, optimize the binary, secure it, or extract a component from it. In the right, I've shown various techniques that can be used to achieve each of those use cases. So what does a typical semantics-based binary rewriter look like? Yes. Uh, Uh, so what does a typical binary rewriter look like? First, we convert uh, the instructions in the binary into some semantic representation. A logical formula is an example of a semantic representation. Then one can use various binary analyses to transform that semantic representation. For example, one can use information about constants and live uh, registers and flags to optimize the semantic representation. Then, using a machine code synthesizer, one can synthesize an instruction sequence for the transform semantics. Mixint is the name of a state-of-the-art machine code synthesizer. So as you can see, uh, the machine code synthesizer is a key primitive of this binary rewriter. And as long as we have a synthesizer for a specific instruction set or ISA, we can plug in different analyses to create different binary rewriting tools. In fact, we have used this design and MixSynth to create a machine code partial evaluator and a machine code slicer. So one can use this uh, analyze, transform, and synthesize loop to rewrite binaries. Uh, however, even with a state-of-the-art synthesizer like MixSynth, this rewriting process is still quite slow. A typical binary has uh, hundreds or thousands of basic blocks or instructions. And uh, the rewriter needs to invoke MixSynth hundreds or thousands of times. And then as we will see shortly, each call to MixSynth takes a few minutes to find an implementation for a spec. So to rewrite a typical binary, uh, this procedure takes several hours or even a few days. So the bottleneck in this rewriter is uh, MixSynth. And in order to rewrite uh, real binaries in a reasonable amount of time, we need to speed up the synthesis algorithm in MixSynth. So we built in several improvements to the MixSynth uh, algorithm to create MixSynth++, which is an improved machine code synthesizer. Uh, our paper and this talk is about the improvements that went into building MixSynth++. So here's an outline for the rest of the talk. I just covered the motivation for building MixSynth++. I'll give a brief primer on Intel's uh, IA32 ISA. And then I'll describe the design of MixSynth while highlighting the key limitations in its synthesis algorithm. Then I'll describe the design of MixSynth++. I'll present some experimental results, and I'll conclude the talk. For those of you who are unfamiliar with IA32, here is a brief primer. ESP is the stack pointer register. The push instruction pushes an operand on top of the stack, updates ESP, and the stack grows upwards. For instructions with more than one operand, the operand on the left is the destination. So for this instruction, EBX is the destination. Square brackets denote memory operands. So this instruction writes the value 40 in the memory location pointed to by ESP. Unless it's an LEA instruction, which stands for load effective address, uh, in which case square brackets denote the effective address of. So this instruction increments ESP by 4. That's all the IA32 you need to know to understand the rest of the talk. So now, let me describe the design of MixSynth while highlighting the limitations in its synthesis algorithm. 
mixint synthesizes a machine code instruction sequence from a semantic specification of the desired behavior. Machine code analyzers usually convert instructions or the syntax into some semantic representation and work at that semantic level. An example of a semantic representation is a quantifier free bit vector logic formula or QFPE formula. For example, this is IA32's push instruction. This is the syntax and this is the semantics. As you can see, the QFPV formula clearly describes what the push instruction does. It updates the stack pointer register and it updates the memory location. Usually, the formula is much longer. For example, it contains identity conjuncts for portions of the state that are unmodified by the instruction. However, to reduce clutter, I will show only the relevant portions of formulas. So, Mixinth takes in a QFPV formula like this as input and synthesizes an instruction sequence that implements the formula, that is, is equivalent to the input formula. So here is another instruction sequence that's equivalent to the input formula. Mixint is parameterized by the ISA of the target, uh, by the ISA of the target instruction sequence. So one can instantiate the Mixint algorithm to work on other ISAs as well. So a key challenge that Mixint has to deal with is the enormous size of the synthesis search space. IA32 has billions of instructions and even if we abstract away the immediate operands, we have tens of thousands of instruction schemas. This along with the exponential cost inherent in enumerative synthesis results in an enormous search space for the synthesizer. For example, with this search space, a naive enumerative synthesizer will take several hours or even days to synthesize an instruction sequence just of length 2. So Mixint counters this huge search space by using a master-slave architecture. The master splits the input QFPV formula into several independent subformulas. Each subformula is given to a slave synthesizer which actually synthesizes the instruction sequence that implements the subformula. The master concatenates the results produced by the slaves and returns the final implementation. Uh, if any one of the slaves time out, then an alternative split is tried out. If all possible splits of a subformula time out, then the entire subformula is given to a slave synthesizer. First, I will describe how the master splits the input formula into independent subformulas, and then I will describe how the slaves perform the actual synthesis. So to describe the working of Mexynth and Mexynth++, I will be using this fee as a running example. So this fee states that in the post state, EAX register must contain the pre-state value that was in the memory location pointed to by ESP plus 4. And then EBX in the post state should contain the result of this complicated computation. And the, the post state memory uh, location pointed to by ESP should contain the value present in the EAX register. It's just, it's just a complicated formula. So one possible way to split fee is as follows. However, note that phi2 uses the EAX register which is modified by phi1. This constitutes what we call an illegal split. If we attempt to synthesize instructions for phi1 and phi2 and concatenate them together in the same order, the result will not be equivalent to phi. A sufficient condition for the legality of a split is flow independence, that is the absence of extraneous flow dependencies from predecessor to successor subformulas. Another possible way to split phi is as follows. This split is uh, actually flow independent because the location updated by uh, phi1 cannot, can never alias with the location that's used by phi2. But Mixint treats memory as a single unit. Because phi1 modifies some memory location and phi2 is using some memory location, Mixint says that this split is illegal and so it discards this split. Finally, Mixin says that this phi1 and phi2 is the only possible legal split of phi and it hands over these uh, subformulas to slave synthesizers. So a slave actually synthesizes an instruction sequence for a given subformula. At a high level, the slave enumerates candidate instruction sequences and it uses the abstract semantic footprint of uh, the subformula to prune away useless candidates. And with the remaining candidates, 
it uses an instantiation of the counter example guided inductive synthesis or the CGIS framework to actually find an implementation. So the details of the footprint based pruner and the CGIS loop of the slave can be found in our uh, PLDI 15 paper. So for our running example, the master splits phi up into phi1 and phi2, gives those subformulas to the slaves and the slaves synthesize these instruction sequences. Mexinth takes several hours or even a few days to find this implementation. So what are the key limitations in the Mexinth algorithm? The decision procedure used by the master to test for flow dependence is extremely conservative. It's treating memory as a single unit. And so splits that are actually legal are conservatively discarded by Mexinth. Also, Mexinth uh, splits the individual conjuncts in phi into independent subformulas, but it never attempts to split a deep term in phi. So um, the slave ends up enumerating long instruction sequences that implement such deep terms. So with these limitations in mind, let us now look at the design of uh, Mexinth++. At a high level, Mexinth++ is just like Mexinth. It uh, uses a master-slave architecture. The master splits the input QFPV formula, and the slaves perform the actual synthesis. However, in comparison with Mexinth, uh, Mexinth++ uses an improved master. And this master produces more and finer grain splits in comparison with Mexinth. By a finer grain split, I mean a split with more number of smaller subformulas. Also, in comparison with Mexinth, Mexinth++ uses an improved slave, and uh, this slave is potentially faster than uh, the slave in Mexinth. First, I'll describe the improvements that went into building the master in Mexinth++, and next, I'll describe the improvements that went into building the improved slave. So recall that a sufficient condition for the legality of a split is flow independence, and the decision procedure that tests for flow dependence in Mexinth treated memory as a single unit. And so splits that were actually legal were conservatively discarded by Mexinth. Mexinth++ uses an improved decision procedure that is capable of reasoning about individual memory locations. So first, Mexinth++ splits phi into phi1 and phi2. And this improved decision procedure says that this location updated by phi1 could never alias with the location used by phi2. And so there is no extraneous flow dependence from phi1 to phi2. And thus, this is a legal split. And then Mexin++ further splits phi2 up into phi3 and phi4 because again, there is, oops, because again, there is no flow dependence going from phi3 to phi4. OK, now consider this subformula phi3. Uh, Mexinth does, uh, so this uh, subformula contains uh, what we call uh, a deep term, that is, a term with a deep abstract syntax tree or AST. Mexinth does not attempt to split such deep terms any further. Uh, so using extra symbolic constants m and n, one can rewrite phi3 like this. Note that these two formulas are equisatisfiable. Mexinth++ later uh, splits phi3 prime into this sequence of individual subformulas. And then suppose if the user provides some scratch registers for synthesis. These scratch registers are usually dead registers at the point where code is to be synthesized. Suppose EBX is uh, dead at this point. Uh, Mexinth++ does register reassignment on these individual subformulas and rewrites them like this. So in this manner, Mexinth flattens a deep term into a sequence of individual subformulas. So for our running example, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the splits produced by the masters in Mexinth and Mexinth++ respectively. One can see that the master in Mexinth++ has produced a finer grain split in comparison with Mexinth. Now let's move on to the improved slave. So the improved slave in Mexin++ uh, uses an additional pruner. Uh, I'll illustrate the role of this pruner using uh, the subformula phi7 as an example. So the slave enumerates candidate instruction sequences. Suppose this move instruction is the first candidate. Xi is the QFPV formula for this candidate. 
Now, phi 7 uh, requires the pre-state uh, bits in EBX to perform the computation that it's doing. Now, if you look at the QFPV formula uh, xi, this candidate actually loses the pre-state bits in EBX when it's transforming the pre-state to the post-state. So no matter what instruction sequence we append to this candidate, we have lost EBX and we'll never be able to implement phi 7. So the slave prunes away uh, any candidate if uh, it does not retain enough bits to implement phi 7. Suppose the next enumerated candidate is this sub-instruction and xi is the QFPV formula for this uh, instruction. So note that all the pre-state bits required to implement phi 7 are latent in this candidate. So if we uh, add some more additional instructions to this candidate, we'll be able to implement phi 7. So the slave retains any candidate if the pre-state bits required to implement phi 7 are possibly latent in that candidate. For pragmatic purposes, the slave also uses a move to front heuristic. So this uh, heuristic uh, moves the instructions that occur in a synthesized code to the front of the instruction pool for the next synthesis task. So for example, say the first slave finishes and I1 is the synthesized code, the instructions that occur in I1 are moved to the front of the instruction pool and that new instruction pool is used in the next uh, slave task. And similarly, the instruction pool at the end, after all the slaves are finished, is used as the starting instruction pool for the next synthesis task or the next fee. So this heuristic is based on the intuition that certain instructions tend to be used more frequently than others during synthesis and this, heur this heuristic prioritizes such useful instructions. So for our running example, here is a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison of the outputs produced by Mexynth and Mexynth++. So Mexynth takes uh, several hours or even a few days to find that implementation. Whereas Mexynth++ finds this implementation in under a minute. So that's over four orders of magnitude speed up in synthesis. Now let's look at some experiments. To test uh, Mexynth++, uh, we wanted to uh, assemble a corpus of QFPV formulas. So we harvested the five most frequently occurring instruction sequences of lengths 1 through 10 from the Speckin 2006 benchmark suite. This set of 50 instruction sequences <coughs> constituted our representative set of important instruction sequences. We converted each instruction sequence into a QFPV formula to create our corpus of 50 QFPV formulas. So for our experiments, we chose to obtain these formulas from actual instruction sequences. However, there is no restriction on the source of the formulas and they can come from anywhere. So this slide summarizes our uh, results. This uh, scatter plot compares the synthesis times obtained using uh, Mexynth and Mexynth++. So Mexynth is here and Mexynth++ is here. Uh, note that the axes are in logarithmic scale. The blue line represents the diagonal. So if a point lies on the diagonal, Mexynth++ produce no improvement. If it lies to the left and above, Mexynth++ perform worse. If it lies to the right and below, Mexynth++ perform better. So some key results. Out of our 50 formulas, Mexynth timed out on uh, 14 formulas and the timeout value was three days. In comparison, Mexynth++ times out only on two formulas. And for these formulas that timed out in Mexynth, the average speed up produced by Mexynth++ is over 1981 times. And then for the remaining formulas, the average speed up produced by Mexynth is uh, three times. And if we consider only the formulas whose baseline synthesis numbers are greater than uh, 100 seconds, then the speed up is more pronounced, 11 times. So uh, we replaced Mexynth by Mexynth++ in Viper, which is a machine code partial evaluator. Viper uses machine code synthesis uh, to uh, produce residual code. And uh, we measured the total uh, time taken to partially evaluate an entire binary using Mexynth and Mexynth++ respectively. So this table shows uh, the results. The average speed up produced by uh, Mexynth++ 
is uh, 1.25 times. However, note that these micro benchmarks are like fairly small programs and also the formulas given to the synthesizer are also quite small. We expect the speed up to be more uh, uh, prominent for a binary rewriter that, use, that deals with larger QFPV formulas. So in conclusion, I uh, presented several improvements to our existing machine code synthesis algorithm and I presented Mexynth++ which is an improved synthesizer for IA32. Uh, Mexynth++ uses an improved master that has an improved decision procedure for flow dependence and it flattens uh, deep terms in formulas and this produces, uh, this splits an input QFP formula into more uh, sub formulas. And then the slave uses an extra pruner and the move to front heuristic so that it finds an implementation faster for a given sub formula. Um, Mexynth++ uh, plus plus timed out only on two out of our 50 uh, formulas and for such formulas it produced a speed up of over 1981 times and for the remaining formulas it produced a speed up of three times. Uh, that concludes my talk and I am ready to take questions from the audience.